Rubik's Cube, invented in 1974 by Professor Erno Rubik, Hungarian professor. It rapidly became one of the world's best-selling toys. In fact, it is still the best-selling toy to date. It's rapidly being approached by the uh, iPhone, incidentally. Uh, mathematically speaking, there are 43 quintillion different combinations. That's, for the math nerds among you, that's 4.3 times 10 to the 19. Uh, for those of you that aren't into maths, that's what we know in uh, mathematics as officially a mind-numbingly large number. To put that into some sort of perspective, if you were to give a Rubik's Cube to every man, woman, and child on the face of the Earth and get them to twist it once a second, it would take them 195 years without stopping to get to all the possible permutations. That's insane, just for the record. <laughs> now, the world record for solving one of these uh, is currently held by a Dutch kid by the name of Mats Valk. Uh, he was 16 at the time, this is in 2013, and he got the world record of 5.55 seconds. That blows my mind. Personally, I can solve it in about 25 to 30 seconds, um, unless you let me cheat. Do you mind if I cheat? Sorry, I should explain. Uh, my name's Tom Crosby, and I'm a magician. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, no, save the applause, it gets better. So. Uh, <laughs> I'll put those down for now. So, the question that I have for you all today seems like a simple one. What is the most magical experience you've ever had? This seems an incredibly vague question. It's intentionally quite vague uh, because it all depends on what you think of as a magical experience, <coughs> which stems back to what is magic? Let's take a couple of steps. Good. Yep, one more. Perfect. Uh, take this seriously. Now, it's an incredibly difficult question to answer. I personally have spent a lot of my life asking this question and still don't have an answer I'm completely happy with. Smarter men than I have spent more time than I have and still haven't reached a conclusion. So, TED Talks are all about asking questions and answering them. Rather disappointingly, I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I do have a couple of ideas I want to put forward to you. Uh, so let's work with a very simple definition to begin with. Magic is the impossible. Sounds pretty good, nice and simple, nice and succinct. But there's already a word for the impossible. They call it the impossible. So let's take it a little step further. How about magic is creating the impossible? Sounds pretty good, but it's still got that word impossible there. And the impossible is, by very definition, impossible. I can't do it. So let's take it one step further and settle on the closest that I've come so far on an individual uh, definition, creating the illusion of the impossible. Now, I still have a problem with this. Because, I, like I say, I think about this far more than I probably should. So I'm not here to try and convince any of you here that what I'm doing is genuinely magic. It's what I do for a living. I travel all over the world doing this stuff. But I'm not genuinely magic. Sorry to disappoint. Um, I can't walk on water, feed 5,000 and all that. Well, it depends on the size of the buffet. But for the most part, I can't do real magic. Nowadays, I don't think anyone truly believes that magicians do real magic. I could be wrong. Most of this talk comes from very little fact and purely based on uh, my own personal findings. If I do a magic trick, like the Rubik's Cube, I tend to get the same reaction from most people. I was doing some magic in the break before we started, and uh, I still got more or less the same reaction. Wow, how did you do that? I like that reaction. That's a nice reaction. More accurately, I like half of that. I like the first half. Wow. Wow is that moment of wonder, that moment of astonishment, which I like. You can keep making that noise. That's an inherent, wow, the shock factor. People don't generally know how to react to magic tricks. That's what I've found. There's, it's always that moment of, huh. Immediately followed by the worst bit. How did you do that? How? That means you no longer care about that moment of wonder you had a second ago. Now you want to find the answer. That's something that's happened for years, about 200 years, give or take. Again, I don't know the exact numbers. But I think I know what's responsible to this. That's my microwave. I have no idea how that works. <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is it's something to do with heating up the water in the food. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, cold food goes in, press the button, hot food comes out. Job done. Nice and easy. I don't think it's magic. I have no explanation for how that works in detail. I'm sure many people here probably do. I certainly don't. 
but I'm sure as hell it's not magic. Now, ever since technology sort of came into our lives, every question that we've had an answer, every question that we didn't have an answer for can probably be answered with technology. Like, we don't know what the answer is, but we know that there is an answer there. When it comes to magic, back in the days of old, people would watch it and appreciate the magical feeling. Nowadays, eh, we're not too fussed. Incidentally, while we're on this topic, did you know you can't do magic for anyone under the age of three? You can do magic for a dog, but you can't do magic for someone under the age of three. I find that incredible. That might seem really obvious, they're very young. But let's take a very simple trick, for instance. If I take a pen, I can make it disappear, make it reappear, <coughs> nice and simple. Very simple trick, it's in most beginner's books. But something like this, to people that don't know how it works, that's pretty cool. I'm just making a pen disappear, it vanishes, comes back, nice and simple. Now, if you do that for a child of about four or five, their reaction is fairly standard. Wow, it's up your sleeve. Or something along those lines. It's the standard reaction that we've talked about. Wow, how did he do that? It's the moment of astonishment, followed by, how? How is it possible? They've watched cartoons on their TV. They know it's not magic. There's not people living inside that box. It's technology. There's, there's an answer. They don't know the details, but they know there's an answer. At least in what I'm doing, See, it's incredibly simple. But if I do this for a, three or four, uh, for a two or three year old, and I'm being very general with the ages, that's not always 100% and every child's different and all that jazz. But if I do a simple, if I make a pen disappear for a small child, about two or three, they don't react. A dog will react. A child won't. And that's because at that age, they don't understand what's impossible. That's a carefully worded sentence. They don't understand what is impossible. Because in order to fully understand what's impossible, you need to have a complete knowledge of everything that's possible. Just me. But that's food for thought. Now, in today's world, there are two types of magic. Uh, one of them is spelled slightly weird. Good. Wake up. No, let's put that back. Perfect. Magic with a K. Uh, again, originated about 200 years ago. This was to differentiate, well, it actually differentiate, it came about long before then, but to differentiate between magic as I know, and magic as I do it, the performance art, and magic as almost a spiritual experience. The Egyptians had three different words for, for magic, which we now condense to one. That is magic the experience, magic the performance art, and uh, magic in more of a religious tone. But for the most part, we just know it as magic. So magic in this sense, I think, comes down to a more... Uh, I keep using the word visceral. I feel like visceral, perceptual, uh, visceral and perceptual, two, two very different hearts. So magic in this case, without it trying to turn into a uh, 1990s motivational speech, uh, comes down to things like your wedding day. Supposedly the most magical day of your life. That's what they say. Uh, what about uh, a father holding his newborn daughter for the first time? If you believe the marketing, Disneyland. <laughs> Magical experiences. Having a crush on someone for over 10 years and finally getting that first kiss. Magical experience, no matter what you think. I think that's a magical experience, as cheesy as it sounds. And trust me, it's cheesy. <laughs> so, I want one definition for magic that can sum up both of these. Nice and simple. Uh, I'd like to demonstrate this point with, uh, with a card trick. Does anyone have a pack of cards? No? Good, we'll use mine. Uh, I can't really see many people. Hello, Stripey Top. What's your name? Polly. Polly. Lovely to meet you, Polly. I'm Tom. We'll talk later. I'm doing a talk. Uh, Polly, do me a favour. <laughs> Polly, I'll give these cards a shuffle. Just double check. Uh, can you count that they're all there, all 52 of them? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Uh, <laughs> no idea. I'll give them a mix. People don't, I don't want to think I'm cheating. I will be cheating, but if you don't catch me, it doesn't count. So, uh, Polly, do me a favour. 52 playing cards. Uh, I'm going to get you to name a playing card. I should say the jokers have been taken out of the pack. Don't, don't name one of those. Um, and the two most commonly named cards, and if you ever have a trick, if you ever have a magician doing a trick on you and he asks you to name a card, the two most common are the Ace of Spades and the Queen of Hearts. Please don't name one of those. That would make you really boring. But you're not boring. Good, I can tell. Stripey top. So, uh, <laughs> Polly, for the first time, name any card that you'd like. Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. Okay. Polly, it's going to be my job to find one card, make it jump out of the pack, spin around three times in midair, reverse its direction in mid-flight. That's just gravity, for those of you with a glazed look. Uh, and I'm going to try and catch it in my left hand. On a good day, this will work first time. 
On a bad day, it could spin off and hit somebody in the face. Uh, I say that more as a warning because whilst it is much funnier, it's not nearly as impressive for me. So, uh, you said Queen of Diamonds? One card on three. One. Two, I should also explain that uh, when I'm in a slightly higher than normal ceiling room, I do tend to get a little over ambitious, so uh, keep an eye out. So on three, one, you said queen of diamonds, two, three, should be the queen of, no, you're right, save the applause to the end. So, uh, no, 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 no. Now it just feels like I'm begging for it. So. Uh, now, again, I mentioned this earlier. I'm not really magic. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm not. I've, and second little spoiler, I've spent a lot of time practicing that trick. More time practicing the catching than the actual <laughs> finding the card and flicking it out. But I practice that trick a lot. How I practice, I practice in front of the mirror. At home, in my bedroom. There are worse things I could be doing. <laughs> I'm practicing in front of my mirror, flicking a card up and catching it. I need to get a social life, I realize, I understand. But for the most part, that's what I do. It's because I have a passion for magic, it's what I love. But here is my question, going back to the definition of magic. If I'm practicing that trick in front of my mirror, I know how that trick works. Hopefully, at least one or two if you don't know, but for the most part, I'd like to think that's quite a fun little trick. But for the most part, I know how that trick works. Which means that when I'm practicing in front of my mirror, the only person that's watching it knows exactly how it works. Is it still magic? It harks back to the old, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it still make a sound? You see, and this is where it gets cheesy. I believe that a more all-encompassing definition of magic comes down to magic isn't what I'm doing. Magic is what you guys are experiencing. Or what anyone experiences. So a definition that sums up both magic and magic in the more visceral sense, I think comes down to an experience. I believe that magic isn't something you see, it's something you feel. Like I say, that's incredibly, uh, incredibly cheesy. Let me tell you about uh, my most magical experience. This is the story that I like to call How I Made the Sun Vanish. Just for the record, I didn't act actually make the sun vanish. Um, that's not possible. Although, again, that's my job. Back in November, I went through the most harrowing experience of my life. It's pretty horrific. 24th, if you're interested. Uh, I was, um, long story short, I was covered more or less from here down to my waistband in boiling water. A container of boiling water exploded and went straight down, um, pretty much covering me. I had a shirt on and I had uh, jeans on, which is probably why it didn't go any further, but I think, so my entire left-hand side of my face was, was covered and I was rushed to hospital immediately with 10% or more of my body covered in first and second degree burns. It's pretty horrific. That's not the magic experience, just, <laughs> just for the record. Um, in fact, the, the doctor said that uh, um, if I hadn't been wearing glasses at the time, I'd probably be completely blind right now, which certainly in magic, and in fact most, most of what you guys do, I imagine, having eyes comes in pretty handy. In fact, let's get rid of these. No idea. So, uh, so I was rushed to hospital. Here's a picture of me in hospital. Uh, that was Loretta. Loretta was the ambulance driver. She looked after me. Um, as soon as I told her that I was a magician, because <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been on morphine and gas and air at the same time. <laughs> That's a pretty close second for the most magical experience I've ever had, to be honest. <laughs> it's not it. I thought I was the king of the world at this point, just by the way. I told her I was a magician. Uh, I, did, I happened to have a pack of cards in my dressing gown, because who doesn't? <laughs> and uh, no, my mum came with me. Bless her heart. She, uh, she looked after me. Funny story, actually, it turns out, uh, so I was sat on the edge of my bath uh, in the shower when the, when the water was, uh, you know, after the burns, and the ambulance crew turned up. I phoned my mum, because that's what any self-respecting 23-year-old does when they hurt themselves. They call them mummy. My mum dropped everything, immediately drove around, come to look after me. I'm from York. Uh, she dropped everything, came around to look after me. Took one look at me, phoned an ambulance. Ambulance turns up. They get me on the morphine, they get me on the gas and air. And uh, Loretta, again, warns me that... Uh, be careful, because when people are on gas and air and morphine, they have been known to either throw up or cry. So it can go either way. So I'm thinking, well, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Loretta. I feel perfect. Okay, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Oh. No, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right, Loretta. Is, is my mum around? Yeah, she's, she's gone downstairs to get you a phone charger. You're in overnight. 
right, is, 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 you know, I, I just want to make sure she, she's all right. Yeah, yeah, she's fine. She's getting your phone charger. It's like, you know, is she, are you too close? It's like, yeah, she just lives around the corner. I'm really lucky that, that my mum can just drop everything at the drop of a hat. I'm really lucky that I've got someone who's going to drop everything the moment I call her up and she just comes straight round. And I'm really lucky, Loretta, that she's got someone that close. Oh, that's what you mean, I'm going to cry. I'm with you now. <laughs> Um, incidentally, yeah, so she, uh, I offered to show her a card trick. I don't think she was interested. She named the three of clubs, if you're interested. Uh, I didn't catch it. <laughs> Gutted. So a couple of days later, I, I was still staying at my mum's. Mum was looking after me at this point. And uh, we went out for lunch, went out for a couple of hours. And I came back, and I was exhausted. I was still staying at my mum's at the time. Exhausted. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I decided to lay down in my bed and watch a film. So if you can picture the scene, I'm laying down on my bed, watching my laptop. The sun's out, and I'm watching the film, and I blink. And I no sooner blink that the sun vanished. I shit you not. It was <laughs> gone. The sun had disappeared. You guys are probably way much further ahead than I was. Uh, it took me a shocking and shameful time to realise that I'd just fallen asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep for about three hours and just hadn't noticed. It felt like blinking. But for that split second, that was the most magical thing I've ever experienced. There's no way to say this and not sound big-headed. I've been doing magic for such a long time now, as a hobby since I was about three or four years old, and as a full-time job since I was 17. Not a lot of magic fools me anymore. And that's horrible. Magic doesn't fool me. I don't know how, like, I know how most tricks work. Every now and again I'll see something that is an absolute godsend, but for the most part, I don't get fooled. Now, Personally, I quite like the experience of being fooled, especially when you're the only person there and the sun has just vanished. That is a magical experience. People that watch magic and immediately say, how do you do that? You've missed the point of magic. Magic isn't there to make you look like a fool, make you look like an idiot. It's there to give you that moment of wonder, that moment of astonishment, that moment of, wow, 